Hello, Builder people, and welcome to another Bow Tie Friday. That's oh. right, you're with us on a Friday, kicking back, getting ready for the weekend, and listening to us sprout about whatever it is we want to sprout about. So, merch. Come down to Henderson, see us, and woo, we'll hook you up with some merch. Oh, absolutely. Come on down. The Come door on down. is always open. If you've lost, for whatever reason, you don't have Google Maps, yeah. we are in Henderson, WA. Yeah. Come on down. Numbers at the bottom. Give us a call. We'll help you out. Absolutely. So, yes. Sash, I wanted today to talk about um, projects, all right? Uh -huh. Big projects, small projects, all the projects that are happening in WA, and there's plenty happening in WA, because in WA we all know that we'd all be very happy mm. if we could just take the top metre and a half of topsoil off everywhere and sell whatever we've got to the rest of the world. Okay. Money, money, money. Yep, making it rain. Okay, so look, seriously, um, projects. So your engineers and stuff, structural engineers, your, mm. your fluid engineers, your instrument engineers, your electrical engineers, big projects, right? Everybody has a department to deal with all of those areas that a big project contains. Understood, okay? yeah. But what a lot of people don't understand and what's normally tapped on as a bit of an afterthought is what they're gonna do with the wastewater. How are they gonna make that wastewater good enough to put back to environment? And in my years of dealing with water treatment, being out in the, uh, in the multiverse, um, I found that, that it's a tacked on thought, Sash. So Unfortunately, this is the case. Normally what happens is they get to the end of the project and all of a sudden somebody goes, water treatment, what are we gonna do about the water? That, mm. you know, we've gotta release it to the environment. How are they gonna handle with that? And then people start to just put something on in bits and pieces to hopefully yeah. make everything work at the end of the day. It's a band-aid. It's a band-aid and it's a box that they've got to tick. But what they don't realise mm. is that in that process of the water treatment, yeah. if they do that effectively enough and well enough, that it can actually be an asset to the business. So what it means is that A, they can get their environmental credentials ticked off. Yes, yes, and everybody's got to do that for the environment. Mm -hmm. But it can cost them far less money in order to get the water to where it needs to be, where they can reuse the water. Because mm -hmm. water's not a finite resource, people. No, gosh no. Right? We've got to be really, and for all of our friends out in the, you know, out in the wilderness, around the country. Yeah. Water is so valuable. Go Shout on. out to yeah. all of our uh, people that are involved in lithium mining. Obviously, lithium mining involves quite a bit of water and water usage, mm -hmm. right? And whereas lithium projects are normally concentrated on the water treatment side, because that's what they do and that's a main part of that, the issue becomes where we're dealing with offshore platforms, where we're dealing with mining companies, where we're dealing with washdown bays, where we're dealing oh. with contaminations outside of the normal perhaps or yeah. what people think oh well we've just got a big truck we'll just park it on a concrete pad we'll wash it down and everything's all good the point is that if you can save that water mm. right it's big if you can reuse that water again successfully what? then all of a sudden your costs reduce and a dollar saved is a dollar earned and that's what people sometimes don't understand. You can make some money, that's fine. But if you can save some money, you also make money. Chris, <sighs> mind blown. Right? I hear a plan coming along. There is a plan. So here at Oleology, we have a consultancy side to the business. So effectively, for the larger projects that are dealing at the end of the day with water treatment, if you have a project that's already been built, which is where your water treatment's not successfully working currently at the moment, you can get in touch with us, numbers below, and we can consult with you on how you can effectively either reduce the costs that you've got at the moment from your water treatment business, and we can help you to design for a brand new project so you can take that to market to then get a price on doing that. Yeah. But we can work with your engineers, we can work with your project and design people, and we can make sure that the outcomes that you've got, in particular reference to water, is the outcomes that you want oh, and you so require. Many ticks, so many okay? ticks. There is even an additional cherry on the top with this. 
for all of the clients that we've been able to help as part of that front end engineering, gap analysis, assessing where the opportunities, the sinks and sources are for all those engineers out there. Mm. That when a system is able to be designed and to optimize what is existing on your site, that even the purchase of that, there are various deductions, so price saving opportunities on said water treatment to be installed on site. Fantastic, Sash. So Fantastic. So it's a win-win, effectively. Yeah. Win for the company, win for yourself, right? And I know that at this particular time, everything's hard. I know that there's situations where everybody thinks that they need to look after their particular workplace and work after, look after their area and nobody wants to come up with an idea that's gonna fail because that's gonna impact on where they are within the business. Yeah. Let us help you to do the right thing by both the company, yeah. let us help your company and effectively, Give us a call on the number below. If it's water treatment that you need, we're the people to see, all right? Like so, it. like we always say on a Friday, stay well, stay, stay happy, happy, and value your time. <laughs>